Hello, so we're inside Crazy Talk Animator 2, and we're going to take a look at how you can create animation for use in games, uh, for 2D game development in such engines such as Unity or interactive apps. The characters inside Crazy Talk Animator 2 are all set up to be multi-angle ready, which means that I could turn this character any direction if I just select this character and open up my 3D tool. I have this 3D motion key editor. I can uh, change with this slider bar uh, the angle that the character is facing. So Crazy Talk Animator 2 is really a, a really powerful tool, not only for general 2D animation, no matter what your output is, but it's really flexible for game art design, which is what we're really talking about today. Another cool thing with Crazy Talk Animator 2 is that you also have uh, this this complete 3D human IK bone rig that you can use to click and drag to actually animate your character that way as well. So this is kind of a cool way of working too. So once we have an animation on the timeline, which I have Saul selected here, I'll go down to my timeline and open up his track. And you can see under 3D motion, I've added a 25 frame motion track, motion clip uh, from our motion folder. Uh, if you go to your animation tab, go to motions, go to 3D, you'll see another folder of folders. And in that folder of folders, you'll see things like move, idle, talk, and so on. Uh, that you'll be able to select and, and see more things that are motions. And these are, um, the motion that I'm using is actually run happy. So Saul is currently running happy. So this is the animation loop I've got set up. I've got 25 frames. My goal here is to export that as a, um, G or as a, a PNG sequence. I'm going to ultimately build a sprite sheet out of that. And so the next step I have is once I've got uh, a character on the on this on the screen and then also some motion is I want to set up the output. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go to export. One thing that you can do actually, even when you start this, is to set up the workspace a little bit better. The um, the workspace defaults to this. Um, 12, 1280 by 720, which is great if you're exporting for the screen, if you're doing animation, you know, for video output. But if you're doing something for game design, you probably want to have something a little more uh, square because ultimately sprite sheets can be best created and most efficient whenever they can be a grid. Uh, and I'll explain that later on. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change our active work area to... 250 by 250 to make that area square. So you'll see this that that uh, the rectangle on the outside is now changed to a box. This is our, our safe working area and we just want to hit play to make sure that our animation is all in there and it seems to be just fine. So we're good to go. So we know that we're going to export 25 frames of animation. Um, I've actually set that up in the export range here 1 to 25. There's 25 and then we can choose our format. And so we're going to choose uh, PNG sequence. And we want, uh, we'll go ahead and keep 30 frames per second. You can change it if you want, but you're going to want to note what your frames per second is later on. Whenever you add this artwork to your game engine, like in Unity, it'll matter there too. Um, and then also the export range 1 to 25, we've set that up so we're ready to export. The PNG sequence will automatically build a folder full of images for us. I'll just add a folder here. Okay, so now we have an entire folder of each individual frame of that animation. And we're going to build a sprite sheet out of this using an app called Texture Packer. Texture Packer is a free app for seven days. Then you can either pay to keep the pro version for 39 or you can use this free version like I'm still using. And either way, um, it's, it's a good app to use. 
um, if you're going to be serious about creating um, sprite sheets for now I would get the pro version because it gives you high resolution output on the left hand side you have the uh, unity 3d uh, selection I've just made from this data format you've got all kinds of different game engines and things listed in here so you may find something else that you like as well but just for the time being we'll go ahead and select this since this is where I'm, I'm gonna assume we're headed and then the next step is we'll go ahead and go get our PNG files. So you can just do a select all and click and drag those over into this area where it says sprites. And then when you add those, what you're going to find is that the uh, the all of the frames have been kind of scrunched together, and they do or they do this to try and create more efficient usage of space in this image we don't need that we want a we want a real direct um forced square grid worthy and i'll show you how, how how we do it um some settings to adjust here in texture packer uh go ahead and and scroll down and change the size constraints to any size do a force squared we're still kind of jumbled over here. We're going to change this algorithm to basic. Starting to look a little better here. And then we're going to change this trim to none. See, now we're getting every pixel of that 250 by 250 per frame. And so if I zoom out, you'll see that we've in fact got that. Here's frame one, here's the end frame. So here's a perfect sprite sheet all set up. Texture Packer works really well for that. So you can export uh, this by publishing it out like so. So I'll just go back to my documents, make a new folder, Sol Sprite. runs all and it's going to tell me everything exported okay and then I can just go to my documents where I saved it it's all sprite and now here I've got here I've got a sprite sheet that's ready to go uh, it's efficient for game design for 2d art um, and with Crazy Talk Animator 2, it makes it really simple to set this kind of animation up.